not to embarrass anyone specifically, but I will tell you, you do not look at texts or emails during class. You don't fix your hair. You don't look around. You don't find a place into casual space where you are kind of just waiting. This is really an active engagement. I don't know how to teach, tell somebody to leave the class. Rudy would, would have done that. He would have yelled and screamed at anybody who did anything that was disturbing at all. But watching somebody read an email during the class is very um, complicated for the system. So if you are one of those people who choose to do that, that is really, really wrong and you don't belong here. If you can't correct that behavior, then don't come. <clears throat> there is nothing static about your spiritual practice. You don't arrive at a place that absolves you of engagement in this journey of life. Those of you who sit here looking for a path out or a path in or a status space or something that absolves you of certain kinds of uh, requirements in the human journey, nope, not here, won't happen. This is the place of learning to be part of the non-static journey of human experience and how to engage it with a certain amount of grace. The word that comes up a lot is from the 60s. It's like the flow, go with the flow. So you can be fighting the flow you know, I don't want it to be that way. This is too hard. I don't get what's going on. I've been working so hard. Why is this happening to me? You can join You can join that mindful space and get angry and hostile about the way life is treating you. Or you can go, okay. And when you go, okay, you have to act in a particular way. You have to be able to do the work that's in front of you. Maybe it's really big work. Maybe it's tiny work but you have to be able to find a way to move with the flow, to engage it rather than obstruct it, then try to stand in its way and make it, make yourself feel like you're being somehow singled out or punished or whatever it is your mind is telling you. And it is the mind, as Rudy said endlessly, and I said endlessly, that slays the soul. The mind gets in the way all the time. Why me? Why do I have to have such a hard time? Why is this happening? Why did that toothpaste fall on the floor? Why do I have to bend down and pick it up? When you're in that mindset, and believe me, I've been there, the best thing you can do is go pick it up. Put it back. Quiet. Be quiet. Stay still. Re-enter the flow. The great thing about a spiritual practice is that it's a practice. And you do it over and over and over and you try to get it right. But there is no right that is final. That is, okay, I did it, I'm done, I'm finished. And if you think there is, up until the moment you leave this world, you're going to be betrayed by your own mind thinking that, because it's not like that. There's very little contextual mind that's ultimately involved in this spiritual journey. It's a thing that is happening, and you are the happening. It's not happening to you. It's not about you. It's about the totality of which you are a very real participant. You are a separate entity of like every blade of grass, and yet you are the very thing that's growing, that's manifesting, that's happening at any given moment. And if you can settle into, accept, return to that space of just acknowledging and being and serving, you will find a pathway to a kind of flow that will be mesmerizingly beautiful. Now, it's not that you're trying to attain that. 
because trying to get a reward and then having it and holding it are not part of a process of flow because flow is changing all the time. And it's not like you have to work every minute to try to get back into flow. At some point, you just allow the flow to be. You stop fighting. You stop resisting. You stop thinking, this is what I have to do or this is what I don't do. But if you're stuck in that mode, then do it consciously. Pick up that paper on the floor. Love the person who's in front of you. Call the person who needs to hear from you. Sit back and be quiet for five minutes and just settle in and go, I'm too noisy, let me quiet down. And if you can't find a way to do that, ask for help. Ask for help to be quiet, to be open, to be surrendered, to be available to the larger universe. Interestingly enough, asking for help is a real doorway. Ask and ye shall receive. It's not a secret. If you want help, Request it, and then don't expect it instantaneously, although it could occur instantaneously. Allow it to find its way back into play with you, because you can get yourself so out of the circuit that it takes a while to bring you back into, aha, okay. And you can be dislodged from that at any moment, because life is what happens. And all I can tell you is, if you have a practice or some consciousness that tells you, I just left the loop or I just left the flow, then you can say, please help me to get back. Or you can just take a breath and get back. Not a secret. Not that hard. And if you've been having a spiritual practice for however many years or decades, it's a doorway. But the fact that you've had it for decades doesn't mean you're an expert at it. I have been aware of too many people who have been there for decades, and I am aware of myself. And I see how much I need still to manifest the asking and the allowing to be in flow. It's a stunningly beautiful thing. And <clears throat> the last month or two of sort of worldwide chaos, and I have been part of that chaos, um, I've had to work really hard to come back to center. Some of the magical things happening around us right now have made that a little bit easier, but it hasn't been that I haven't had to work inside to maintain my own sensibility while all of the universal dynamics are at play. And they're at play in a very big way. They're always at play in a big way, but we've never had social media. We've never had news reporting in your face every 10 minutes. We've never had that stuff. So the mind is very engaged in everything. And if you want to flow with life, you have to allow that to happen. And you have to allow yourself to go. It's astounding when that occurs. It is astounding. And I'm discovering in my old age, and it's a really interesting journey. And I know some of you want to hear about that stuff and some of you don't. But the old age phenomenon is the absolute and the absolute de demonstration, if you will, of what you have been doing your whole life. It is the payoff. I hate to put it that way because reward is not a good idea. But if you've been working and if you have a muscle of working and you've been available, it starts to play for you like you cannot believe. And what's been arising in me has been states of joy and the word, interestingly, nostalgia, in which my past existence has come in a flowering way to make me like so joyful that I've been in touch with some of these amazing moments that filtered through this journey that I've been on. And things just rise up. And even all of you rise up inside me. And I just feel this like a blessing that I know you and that you come to the table and that we sit here and have these moments that are so exquisite because they're not part of the norm. They're not part of what people get on a daily basis unless they bring themselves to the table. And not many people bring themselves to the table. 
Now, you may think going to church or synagogue or the mosque or something like that is bringing yourself to the table, and in a way it is. But the thing that was taught to me by Rudy, who learned from many great masters of, of his own and people who shine through this particular teaching, there is a way and a practice of assisting this journey so that you really do make an effort to show up to the magnitude of, the massiveness of, the beauty, the magical reality of your being. People don't do that. And if you look at many, many people around you, you see exactly the opposite. It's completely a mental construct and they are following their own sort of chaotic, mindful behaviors into the world. Hearts that are very, very disturbed and distorted and they are living lives, they're very real lives, and they are also part of, just so you know, the totality. So don't be critical of them. What you want to do is help them. Help the people who are not able to find their path to the simplicity, the quietude, and the availability of this enormous guidance and love and consciousness that resides inside every one of us. The universe totally understands every wave that's crashing on the shore and rolling through the, through the depths of the ocean. It knows all of that. It's not being critical. It's not saying, oh, that person's terrible and that person's wonderful. It doesn't do that. It understands and knows the totality of its being, of its existence. We are part of that. We can either be a victim of it or we can be an assistant to it, a vehicle or a vessel, or we just relax and just do what's there, do what's in front of you. Open the can of peas, wash out the can, put it in the recycling bin, wash your hands, make your dinner, do whatever you're doing. Trust me, the mundane nature of that may seem sort of minuscule to the mind, but it is part of the totality. You know, washing the dishes, taking out the garbage, getting ready for bed. All of these routines that we have, and we all have them, can be done with grace and beauty and simplicity, or, oh God, here I go again. It's your mind. It's just your mind that locks into these kinds of states. And what starts to happen, at least I'm discovering at the age of 81, that certain elements of grace magnify. They kind of go, you're an old guy, we're gonna give you a little bit of a break. That's kind of what I get. They're saying, I, I get it. You've been around the block. We're going to, it's okay. You don't have to think about it. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. That kind of mindset comes into play. And it's like, wow, that helps. That really helps. And I feel one of the great parts of my existence right now is being helped. I am being helped. There are days I'm confused and not sure what to do. As you all know, I forgot to send out a you know, an, an invitation to this class today because I forgot Friday was Friday, which is not uncommon anymore. And it's just like those things are falling away. Is that a tragedy? Well, I don't know. Maybe someone didn't come today who might have come had they gotten the invitation. But I can't worry about that. It's not my life. I just will do what I can do. And there's an amazingly forgiving element to the universe. It really just loves us. It's all I can tell you. It just loves us. And either you're allowing yourself to be loved or you're sitting in critique of who you are and what you are and what all this is. And that's not fun. And I would say, stop it. Don't do that. Try to get yourself back into alignment. Take a breath. Ask for help to surrender, to open, to accept. Just do that. And it's really really helpful. The fact that you have to remember to do that 20 times a day is not a bad thing, because at least you remember to do that. People who don't remember or don't even know to do that, you can look at them. You can watch them. They're in your life. They're all over the place. It's not easy. It's not a good choice. The choice of consciousness is asking it for help and guidance, and then watching as the universe supports you and guides you through the path of your life ultimately to this extraordinary existential moment of goodbye. And we're all heading there, some of us faster than others, some more gracefully than others. I would venture to say grace is a good way to live. Grace is a lot to do with flow. You just are, okay, there you are, and you go through it. 
And will you not be challenged? No, you will be challenged up to the probably last instant of your life. But if you've had enough grace and you've had enough support and enough guidance and enough love in your life, more than likely, I would say that will show up at the last moment. You'll finally go, okay. And that's what we want. We want to arrive at some profound okayness in our life. And I will say the day-to-day -day journey right now for me as it's unfolding is uh, very enlightening. It's very um, supportive. It's very um, calming, centering. You know, there, 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 are, there are moments that are hard, you know, I mean, you all know my story, <laughs> you know, I, I love, I love company and I don't love aloneness that much, but it's going, screw it, you know, you're alone, enjoy, get used to it. And I'm going, well, <laughs> what am I going to do? Okay. And you figure it out, you figure it out and it will help you figure it out because it's the inspiration that motivates you in every part of your life. You figure it out. You become this complete version of yourself, which happens to be something much greater than your body-mind construct. That's a very small part of the totality that you are. And being aware of that totality doesn't mean you live separate from your body and your mind and your name and your personality. It just means your name and body and personality and mind are affected by who you truly are, the totality of your being. What a gift. What a gift to feel how big and how massive you really are and how extraordinary your true nature is. And what a sadness not to know that. It's really hard. So we're all here trying to, um, to play this game, live it out, and doing our best. I thought, I thought today I was going to talk about the Olympics because every four years I talk about the Olympics. And every four years, I talk about how amazing they are and how magical they are and what it is to live in a world where we all come together and we we, we participate in this splendorous journey of trying to be a, a whole world, a singular world of competition and, 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 and camaraderie, of trying to achieve something, of growing, of working really hard, of expressing ourselves in ways that we never knew we could, of finding strength and power and ability, and then becoming number one or becoming less than number one. How to deal with achievement, how to deal with failure, how to deal with achievement and then fail and come back and have more achievement. All of these stories every night on NBC, you know? And you watch these stories, if you are watching it, and you go, well, I do. I get rooting, I get caring, I start crying because they, they manipulate you like mad to feel st the stories of these people. And if they don't deliver what they're supposed to deliver, they cut them out of the loop, which is kind of amazing. We're so totally manipulated by the, by the journey. On the other hand, the feeling of what it means to be human, part of the, the collective, part of the worldwide search and reach for more and better and faster and more beautiful or whatever it is we're all trying to do. It's really wonderful. So I didn't talk about the Olympics except for this and suggest maybe that you watch them. Uh, you have another week. But I, I can only tell you that part of the flow for me right now is the celebration of a world that works and a world that comes together, and a world that celebrates itself, and a world that sees triumph, and a world that sees failure as still effort, and, and, and can celebrate the effort. And getting there and not getting there are all part of this exquisite totality. We're all in that, guys. We're all in that game. And we're all part of the Olympics on some level. But engage it or don't, don't engage it, you know? I mean, I had a choice yesterday. I woke up in the morning, and I have no energy at all. No, and I was just so tired. And, and, you know, that's part of the aging process. And I always walk every day. And uh, and something in me said, you know, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. And then Dylan Thomas's voice came up and said, rage, rage against the dying of the light. And I went, okay. And I walked. I just got up and I walked. And I did my walk and it felt great. I did my squats and I did my push-ups and I did all my stuff, even though nothing in me wanted to do it. Now, I'm not on the Olympics and I'm not going to be one of those people, but I got to tell you, it was similar. It was really similar. I could have sat down and go, the universe said it's okay. I don't have to do anything. I can just settle into oblivion, or I can be active and participant in the world. The Olympics 
Your meditation, your spiritual life is your guide. Follow it, listen to it. But I will tell you, activate, energize, choose to do in life as long as you're around. And you may find that more stimulating than just settling into, I can't, it's too late, it's too hard. I mean, there will be a moment for that. And I have them, I keep looking for when did when do they give me permission to go, I can't do it. Or my grandson's word, done. When do I go to done? Not yet. Not yet. So, you know, rage against the dying of the light, but be prepared, be prepared, it's going to die. <laughs> or there's going to be death. Light may not die. I have a feeling that may be the surprise. <laughs> the light may go on forever, but we'll see. Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you. I'm sorry I forgot to send out the invitation. I may be that I'll keep forgetting. And if you want to come Sunday mornings at 11 or 8, depending on what coast you're on, you're always welcome. Come to be around. Do not look at your email while you're online. Don't adjust your hair if you can help it. And just sit still, be open, be connected, and find your way into um, something that will give you a gratitude for being alive and here and present now. Thank you. Um, um, okay, you know, questions. Anybody has questions? I can just want to say one thing, Bruce. I just started doing some um, swimming recently, oh. uh -huh. and it really calms my mind down. I'm so shocked. I come out of the lake, and I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just looking at the trees and, like, breathing. It's I, kind I, of I, I swam for, like, 25 years. You know, at the YMCA, where the, at, at Indiana University, wherever I was, I would swim. I loved swimming. I loved it. I don't have access to so much of that here right now, but it's a great task. It's a great thing to do. It's really great. But is it any activity? You know, just walking, just, I mean, keeping your body going is really meaningful because it's going to fail you at some point. And if you keep it going, it pushes that a little bit further down the road and you will feel better. You will look at trees and go, Wow, you know, I I am. I, we have we have the worst week in terms of our. We put in a, an irrigation system and all these new plants around the house, and it's really incredibly beautiful. And but the irrigation system started causing problems with the water in the house. So I would took a shower a week ago, and there's no water. I'm in the middle of a shower, you know, and everything's not working. And we had a we we have all these problems, and we thought they were at the well, but then there turns out to be a filter system and. I had to bring back all these people to try to figure out what's going on. We figured it out. I mean, it's not 100% done, but to watch such disruption find its way back to flow, literal, literal water flow is a joy. I mean, it's a joy. I took a shower yesterday that was full blast and absolutely wonderful. Why did I lose water? Why did water come back? What is this thing about the garden? I'm... I was told there are two bushes that are really, really expensive and need to be watered every day separately from the irrigation system. I go out with such pleasure and just stand there and water the garden. It's not a huge deal, but I'm telling you, you're participating in something that's bigger than you, even if it's a garden. And it's so wonderful. And Blanche has planted our garden. And I've been helping her dig holes and put in the mulch and, you know, and doing all that. And it's like things are growing, you know, tomatoes and peppers and all they're all coming and i never thought the end of my life would be the joy of watching a tomato emerge but that's what it is and it's enough guys it's enough it's it's as big as winning an oscar i know that sounds strange but it is just as joyful just as joyful and every one of us can do it you know you don't have to win a gold medal or a silver or a bronze all you have to do is make your garden grow and watch what happens. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. We'll try this again next week if you still want to come back. If you don't want to come back, God bless. The universe will talk to you without my voice, and it's very loud all by itself. Love you.